everyone. I'm Matthew the Twig Largest, the voice of the forest. It's so good to be at Fishville Brook in the state of Rhode Island today and doing some filming on a future project for Netflix television. This is uh, a lean-to that was built. These are actually built by people who believe in forest fairies and I do believe in forest magic. I can tell you story after story of coincidences, things that have happened in the forest, angels buried in the forest floor. So this forest, have, people have always come to this forest and built these lean-tos for their fairy, for their fairies. So it's so good to be in a fairy's lean-to. I'm getting all kinds of power and positive energy from this lean-to. So try to come out to Fisherville Brook and take a walk. If there's no one out here, you're, you're away from everybody. You won't be exposed to the virus because the virus can't live in a forest that is sunny and fresh air. So get out to your local forest as soon as possible and find the fairy houses and sit in them. You will get feudal energy out. Okay? So Matt, when did all the bears come back? In the last, you know, what it was. Think about the New England forest was cut down in the 1860s. And you know, when colonial people were here, these were all, you go through these forests and you find the stone walls. This was all cleared. This is all second growth forest. Uh -huh. So then what happened is they had rocks here. Somebody went to the Midwest and said, hey, I found a whole place that has no rocks and good soil. So everyone vacated in 1860 or about that time to the Midwest. Well, what happened? The forest started coming back because the forest in New England is one of the most vibrant on earth. There's only one other forest similar in Japan that's also very colorful in the fall. So what happened is now these forests have come back. What come back with the forest? The bears aren't planted by the DEM or the environmental people. They came back because of the forest. They're part of the forest. They're the animals which are part of the forest. You have little mycorrhizae up to the top of the food chain with the black bear and even the mountain lions are coming back and bobcats and, all, and fisher cats. So all these historic things have happened in my career as a tree man in Rhode Island and every year there's more and more sightings. Soon we'll have a black bear that will come from Connecticut or Western Rhode Island will come down and try to find a mate and that's what's always in the news every June or May. Bear sighted in Narragansett, bear sighted in North Kingstown. And it's basically the bear just trying to find new territory. This forest here at Fisherville Brook is bear habitat. There's bears in here, they come through here. They're very hard to see, but we have seen signs already today of the great American black bear. So this is a white pine tree that fell a long time ago and is laying on the forest floor called a forest snag. And they're really important. Dead trees are more important than live trees in nature. So the black bears that are in this forest have come by recently and they take their claws and they reach in and pull these apart. And inside they eat the ants with their long tongues. They're ant eaters. So this black bear was been here recently looking for ants. This is a bear forest. The bears have emerged in Rhode Island in the last 10 to 12 years after 200 years of absence because of the mature forest. So always remember that dead trees are more important than alive in nature. So this snag is very important. You can see that the growth on top of it, it's called a nurse tree. And young trees will grow out of it. It was a giant at one time. A recent bear tear, Yeah, huh? that's a bear tear. You can see where they claw, their claws are like splitting moss. And then they go down and you look at the holes where the ants are. Ah, uh, so they were after so, some good nuggets, yeah. huh? Yeah, we're looking for bear sign today. And we hope to see a bear in the wild on film. We will, sooner or later. where the bear came in and he's looking for insects. Insects are their favorite food, bees and ants. And they claw. You can see where this bear clawed rawr, with his five toes. Just like us, they're five, they're very human-like. They're, they're, they look just like humans and they're related to dogs. So bears, if you do see them like I haven't been able to walk in the forest, it's amazing how human they are and spiritual. So we're looking at him, he's just like us. You're getting hungry, it's towards dinner. There's not many restaurants open. What are we gonna have? Maybe this is his McDonald's, the pizza joint. Fast food. Ah. See the ant holes? See the ant holes? Look at this where he was eating. You can see the holes in, the, in where he was eating. So he's looking for ants. So this bear is very active. He's been here recently. This is new sign. And then over here he dug, he came over here and he clawed here for ants. This is a recent dig. If you want to know about back bears, you want to type in Dr. Lynn Rogers from Minnesota, the greatest bear man that ever lived, the Jane Goodall of black bears, who was in this forest at one time with me. 
a oh, claim yeah? that forest that bears would come back into Rhode Island in a big way because of its great habitat. How true it was, the statements were so true. He's an American icon. Go on to the website, look up Dr. Rogers, go to his Black Bear Institute site, his wildlife sanctuaries. I've been there and studied with him and learned all of this stuff. And you know, so it's really fun. So during this time, everybody get into black bears, read as much as you can. And let me know if there is a bear in your neighborhood. Arr! Going down to the river. That like a dig for bears? May not be a dig, but it could be because bears do digs. They break logs apart, they scratch bark. They go up against telephone poles and rub like this against telephone poles to leave their mark and bite the pole. The study of the bears is incredible. They will be soon common in Rhode Island. They are in Connecticut. 20 years ago, there was no bears in Connecticut or maybe a few. So now it's becoming common. Massachusetts has 6,000. Maine, there's thousands and thousands of bears in the Northeast. So they're an indicator of the forest renewal and they're very important. We need to protect them and learn from them. They're an amazing animal, amazing family units. Beautiful to see one in the wild. I hope everyone gets to see a bear in the wild. And if you do, keep calm. What you do is drop to the ground. If you see a bear, if you drop to the ground, the bear will lose its fear. And then if you stay like that, the bear will stop and you can actually get up and follow the bear. May the bear be with you. Okay. Dr. Rogers was here studying these. So it's just thousands and thousands of babies in this pine forest. The white pine, the state tree of Maine, and the black bear's host plant. So black bears use the cubs to escape up these trees. And at one time, the white pine was the, uh, the sailing mast for, Euro for Europe came here and they were the Royal Navy. They marked these trees. And if you cut one of the white pines that were marked, you'd be beheaded. People were actually beheaded. They used to be in 200 feet in heights. Now the greatest ones we have are 180, the regrowths. There's only a few virgin ones, but we are heading to the virgin one in Rhode Island, the biggest one in Rhode Island. Come follow me. Hello. This is the twig, Matt Largest, the voice of the forest. We are now in Exeter, Rhode Island to one of my favorite spots. We're at the giant Fisherville, Fisherville Brook Giant White Pine, the largest white pine in Rhode Island. Over 12 feet around, almost 13 feet, 110 feet tall. Um, was left here by an Indian trail back in the day. And big trees and large trees are large at the base and they're large at the top. That's how you can tell one of the indicators of great age. It also has flared roots with moss and lichens. Another sign of great age. White pines were sacred to the Native Americans. They're sacred to the black bear, my study animal. And the black bears come and the cubs climb this bark. They can't climb it. There's no other tree that the bark is like this and the mother will let the cubs and the mother will stay at the base to protect the cubs. So that's a very important tree. Fisherville Brook, giant, the great white pine. And you wanna kiss your tree? Okay, you make out with your tree. It's okay. And you hug your tree hard, okay? So everyone go out and hug their tree. Okay, here we are in the understory of the white pines with all the babies. Because trees are like people. They do talk, they do love, and they do reproduce. These are their babies. So these pine trees have had a lot of babies. They're almost like the Mormons. And they are the old Catholics that I grew up with, eight to 10 kids per person. This uh, per tree, this is uh, a special. They have five needles in each group, white pine. Every white pine fascicle group has five. One, two, three, four, five needles in their group. They're in the white pine family. We also over here on the edge have high bush blueberry, which is another great native. Uh, these will be blueberries soon by July. The bears love to eat these and the birds love to eat them. So it's very hard to get them as a human anymore. Back in the 60s in DDT, when I grew up in Jamestown, we used to be able to pick berries because there weren't that many birds. But now there's so many birds. There's so many good things that have happened environmentally that we don't really talk about, which that's why I'm here, the positive, positive power, positive people. So it's so great to be in this pine forest, the cathedral, I call it, the sacred site. My mother's a devout Catholic. And I was quoted in the New York Times as saying that church, the forest was my church. And it really hurt her feelings because she raised me as a Catholic. 
nothing wrong with being a Catholic, but this is my church. I am the voice of the forest. And this is a holy moment where I get to be out here. Because nowadays you could go to you could go to go to the gas pump or go to the store and die from a virus. So now the days are they count much more. I'll never forget the feeling that I have now because of that. Overwhelming gratitude to be alive and to have my health. Because so many people are sick. And we hope that you heal, but you have to go outside. You have to get out there. Get out in the sun, get out in the forest and breathe like to your toes. Forest air has chemicals that are incredible. There's been studies at Oregon State where these chemicals can prevent cancers, all kinds of sicknesses. It may not be completely peer reviewed, but we do know that these research papers are going on. And you will see down the road that it's true, that forests are our lifeline. We have to plant more forests, we have to save every forest we have, and we have to start to learn more and more about them.